Hey everybody and welcome to another Learn to Digitize video. My name is Sue and I'm from OML Embroidery and OML Digitizing and I sound like a man today. I'm sorry about my voice. I'm fighting off a cold and or allergies. Um, I just sound deeper than I normally am, but you can still understand me and hopefully you can still feel the enthusiasm in my voice. So let's get started. Today, this is class number two. Yay to everybody who did class number one, the owl. Awesome. This one is just as exciting and a little bit better. And we're calling it beginner intermediate because there's a lot of beginner things in it. But there's also a few intermediate things like the um, uh, graduated fill, the gradient fill, the color blend, whatever you want to call it. I call it awesome because I think it adds a really good effect to anything um, that you're doing on, especially something like this. And I changed the angle to make it look good. All right, without any more ado, let's get started. And hopefully my voice sounds less manly and more suey. So let's work on that. So the first thing we want to do is open a new design. So you can do it with through here, new blank design, or you can do control N. I always use the mouse It's just who I am. And what we want to do is we want to bring in the artwork for it. So click here on artwork and we're going to bring it in and it's on my desktop handily. There it is. There's our beautiful design that we're going to be working on. Excellent. So the first thing we want to do is check out the size. Now I want to make this just a smidge bigger because I want to be able to put lots of detail in it. So I made it around five. It's somewhere around five. Let's get this centered again. And that's, I guess, about right. Center it. And then what I want to do is lock this down because as you can see, you can move the picture around. And sometimes when I'm clicking and I click off because I do it very quickly, I accidentally move the picture and it's very annoying. So I'm going to go ahead and lock down the picture and I just right clicked on the picture and I pick lock. The shortcut key is K. So that's uh, super easy to do and you can tell that it's done because there's a little lock right there. So let's look at the picture. Let's zoom in a little bit and look at the picture. Now I didn't do these palm trees in the background and this bit of green here. You could color blend a little bit. It's getting a little small, so maybe not, but you could manually shade it. I just ignored them because I didn't think it added any to the picture. The focus is on, um, you know, the color blending here and the beautiful sun and the big palm tree. So let's just keep doing it that way. So let's keep doing it the way I saw it. And if you guys want to do it differently, by all means, go ahead. So I started off with the fun stuff, the color blend. So let's go into digitize. There we are. And we're going to digitize a closed shape because we're going to do the background first. Now there's two ways of doing this. And I'm going to show you one with the, um, the sun and one that you can let Hatch do a little more work for you, which is awesome. So I'm just clicking my points as usual. I'll do this one a little bit slowly and then I'll move up to a little bit faster for the next one. But I, you just want to, I'm left clicking, you just want to place your points nicely. Now, as always in all of these videos, I'm doing it quickly because I don't think you need to sit and watch me place points all the time. You guys go ahead and take your time with what you're doing. Now I'm going to right click in here because I want some curvy lines. And what we're going to do is, uh, for now, we're just uh, going to ignore the palm tree. And I'm following along here, and I'm also ignoring this palm tree. I was talking about the big one. Because we can cheat a little bit, and we can have um, Hatch do a little more work for us by eliminating overlap. So you don't need to go around and digitize. So once you hit your last point, hit enter, and it all fills in. Well, that doesn't look like much now, does it? Let's change it to, we've got a nice bright yellow. Actually, we don't even need to. Let's leave it for now because we can change it when we do our color blend. This is the best part about the whole thing is this color blend. This is what makes it absolutely. We want to go into, while your object that we just did, our background is highlighted, we want to go into edit objects. And if you scroll down here, create color blend. Know it and love it. You will use it often. 
Um, the only thing you have to make sure when you're doing a color blend is you make sure that your picture is big enough. If it's small, it'll do it, but it doesn't look good. So bigger is better with color blend. So let's click on that and we have all of the options here. And you can pick what you want for your top layer and what you want for your bottom layer. And of course, this is going to be it's more dense at the top, looser at the bottom, the opposite, looser in the middle, and the opposite to that. But for this one, we want it more dense at the top and to lighten up. So we're going to pick that and it automatically picks the top. So top layer, we want to be red and the bottom layer, I think we'll do yellow because I think that looked pretty cool. You mix them together they make kind of an orangey and let's click OK. You can also change your spacing, but for this one, I think it looked just fine the way it was. So let's click OK and look at that just simply like that. Now for the one that I did, I thought the angle of it was gorgeous. Um, we can take it off of True View. I guess it's hard to see, but you can see it better in True View. And it's really hard digitally to see the color blend. It looks way better when you stitch it out. So you will be just in awe of the whole thing when you stitch it out. Um, but if you wanted to change the angle, there it is right there. And all you have to do is move it up or down. Again, I really like the way it is, but if you want it going straight across, you just left click, grab it, pull, play around with it, see what you like. I like it, so I am going to leave it. So we have that done now. And what I'm going to do is, um, they're already grouped together, but what I'm going to do is I'm just, for now, I'm just going to get rid of it. I don't normally work like this, but I think it's a lot easier for you guys to see what I'm doing without it there. So that just clears it away. You can tell it's hidden because it has lines through it. It's still there, but we're just, we're just going to hide it. Now let's concentrate on the sun. Now they have two different colors for the sun, but I think I want mine a bright yellow. So I'm going to click on the yellow and I'm going to go back to digitize because that's what we're doing after all. And it's a little bit pixelated because I'm zoomed way in, but that's okay. We're going to start, whoops, didn't I pick it? No, digitize closed shape because that's what our sun is going to be. And this is how I'm going to do it. Now, when you're working on pixelated things, you just make your best guess for it. And we do want a little bit of overlap. So we do want to overlap a little bit. I, I don't really like this little one, but that's okay. Whoops, backspace. I kind of moved my mouse a bit funny. There we go. We can add a bit of pull comp if we're not close enough, but I think this will do just fine. And it's starting to look like a sun. I don't like these really thin ones, but that's okay. You know what? It's fine. So I am making it a little bit bigger and I'm not really minding the pixelation of it. That's okay. We can go around it. And here we want to, we want to go in. So I'm going to put it in a little bit more and cause we're going to digitize the mountains afterwards. Click. I did some right clicks in there. Now I'm doing some left clicks. You don't have to be precise on this part because we're covering it up. When I reach about there, I'm just going to press enter and it's going to finish it up. That looks awesome. I kind of like it. We may be able to do some more details, but that's okay for now. I think um, you don't want to add too much in the way of fancy stuff because we don't want to crowd the picture. I kind of like that sun, how it turned out. The other one, the way I digitized it is I did... Um, I digitize a circle, so right click, right click, right click, and then I finished it off like this, so it was kind of separate. But I kind of like this way too. Um, you guys can try it both ways and see which you like best. I will be showing you both ways so you can see the end results and play around and see what you like. So we're going to do this mountain that's way off in the distance, so it's a really dark kind of looking green. I don't have anything that's the greatest. We can pick brown though. And we can play around with the colors later. I, again, don't think you guys need to see me, um, you know, picking colors and whatnot. I, I'm just doing this quickly so you guys can learn. Now, I did a mistake there, so backspace. Remember, this has to overlap a bit. And I was getting it too tight right there. And it goes right there and left clicking and right clicking to make your curves. This is nice and straight. 
when I get to here, I can press enter and it fills it right in. Actually, I kind of like the brown. All right, let's scoot over to this mountain. It's all about mountains today. Let's pick a dark green and I want a little bit of overlap because we don't want gaps in between here. So let's start our mountain right about there. I think that looks good. You don't have to be too precise with it. You want to have a, you know, a nice kind of flowy look. And I'm right clicking so I can have my nice curves. If you notice the way it's working, I'm not really getting exactly on, but that's okay because I'm happy with that. Now for these palms, I decided not to do them and I think that's fine. I love how it turned out. So for this one, we're just going to kind of ignore what's here. And if you look, you can see the top of it. We know it's probably not straight. So let's put a point, a curve, wrong one. Let's put a straight point in here. Actually, what am I doing back there? We need a straight point there and that puts a nice curve. We don't want it perfectly straight so now we'll put our corner curve our curve it's not corner curve every curve is a corner there we go so that was a right click in there and we'll put a left click because it is a bit straight and we're going to go right under this palm tree not even worrying about it we're just doing our thing and we're going to go down here and the way i did this because again it's all covered up i kind of guesstimated it doesn't even have to be perfect you see there's a nice kind of line through there I just followed it through and there I placed my point and I'm just going to place another one there to get it across and that's how you just kind of ignore things in the picture just because it's there doesn't mean you have to do it that's for sure now I'm going to press enter there we go don't really like that color but it'll do look we have nice overlaps here I am kind of liking it so far let's go back and I am digitizing in true view again I just prefer it yeah y'all don't have to we can do now just to make things easier i'm going to right click and i'm going to hide select it again i don't actually work this way but it really makes it a lot easier for you guys to see what i'm doing i would just normally just go into out of true view check what i'm doing so i can see underneath and keep going okay so let's do the next thing because these mountains the sun was just too much fun to do we did the mountains we covered them over i think this is in the foreground so we can either do the background or the tree next let's do the tree because it looks like it's going to be fun so i placed a point and this is kind of curvy it's not straight so i think we're going to do some right clicks in there right click right click and we'll end off with a left click and we're going to go up a little bit because we want it to be overlapped and we're going to kind of cut out these pieces not exactly the way they have it but close enough we want to we want to leave a little bit of room for our darker tan right there so just almost see this one's right off and if we were going to do it right off when we do the next side it would make just it wouldn't look quite right so experiment if you guys can figure out how you do it now this one isn't curvy i'm not sure why but i thought it should be artistic license with everything you do right so there we go that is starting to look good down a little bit here and it kind of goes here to the next one and then enter now that went dark green because i didn't choose my color but that's fine i don't really have any sandy ones so i want something light and then dark so how about this one for light let's see how that looks yeah you know what that's good enough again you don't need to see me play around with colors but i think if you get the colors right on this it'll be great so let's do the other side left click to start right click because it's curvy and you can go up further i'm probably being too close with them left click at the top and i did go in a little bit and we want them to overlap. We don't want um, unsightly gaps in our digitizing when we stitch it out. So I'm just kind of following, making sure I have enough room. And for this one, I am only left clicking. There's no curviness in this part. So it's a quick, quick, and quick. And there we go. I was off a little bit on that. Again, you guys always be pickier. I'm just going to do it needs to be down here there we go 
and so far right there and hit enter and it'll finish it and we want this one a little bit darker don't we again I don't quite have the colors that I want let's see well that's more of the sand I think I'm going to save that yellowy for the sand because that doesn't look right well we can make it a whole other brown what do you think we're going to highlight it first click brown yeah why not that actually looks good. Now don't worry about hip here. This is going to be covered all by our palm trees, right? So why don't we do, why don't we do the sand and the water next? We can do, let's do the sand because I've kind of mentally picked the color for it. And we want to do a closed shape. Now on the sand, again, you can see there's a nice line. And remember, we did the green. And this is why I generally don't hide stuff, because I'd like to see exactly where my green started. But for now, let's just guesstimate. And we want to overlap a little bit. And we want to overlap here. Quite right. Place a point. Now I'm going to start curving a little bit. So I'm right clicking. And right here, we want to right click. Another thing, whoops, I don't want that. See what happened there? Too many right clicks. Wow, same again, back one. If that happens, that's what you do, back one. I was thinking while I was doing this that if you wanted to put a feathered edge on this part where this sand is kind of meeting the water, you could try that too. Or you could put a feathered edge on the white or you know one or the other or both and see how it looks. I think that might be um, a good effect. It's big enough for it. Yeah, look at that. Now, this is over top, but we're going to rearrange stuff after. I guess we could do it now. We want it, we want it under the tree. So left click, hold, go up. Now, look, yeah, there we go. That's better. So let's move over here to our water. See, you guys thought this was so hard to do, and it just isn't. It's just digitizing. We're just adding fancy things to it. And it makes it so much more fun that way. So let's do, I know it's a turquoisey color, but I think a blue. That makes me feel good having a nice blue. And we're doing the water. And we're going to add some of the white part. Add room for it. Again, we want to overlap. You should probably overlap a little bit more. I am right clicking to make my nice curves. Now I want to go down a little bit because we're gonna add in this white and I don't want it to overlap too much and I'm right clicking. I wanna leave a little bit of more room for our white and see that's getting into the brown and it's gonna be, unless you wanna do the white in two pieces, which I don't. So I'm gonna leave a little more space. That's how you figure it out. You just kinda of go along and I'm left clicking and right clicking to make my curviness and I want that one down just a little bit. You don't have to be too precise because we are going to cover it with awesome motif stitches. And once you hit here, just hit enter and it fills in. Ooh, let's take a look at that in true view. It, well, it doesn't look like a whole lot, but pull back a little bit. Ah, don't you feel like you're on a beach? Digitizing on a beach, that would be awesome. So, okay, we've got this matching. We've got right here. We're going to zoom in a little bit because we're going to digitize some blocks to do the white of uh, the sand here. Now, you can do it in a satin stitch or a flat stitch. Or again, you could feather the edges here. I think that would awesome. We're going to play around with it. But for now, let's go to digitize blocks. And this is something... Normally it takes a lot of practice to be able to do, but instead of going around the outside and ending, we're kind of doing it this way, piece by piece, and you can make adjustments and everything. But this is just beginner on it. Um, it's an intermediate stitch, but I think everybody can do it. And it's a side to side thing, and you can right click and see how it pulls. And we wanna keep it kind of close to that. And this line becomes your stitch angle. Left click, we want to right click, and we want to get right in there, and we want to turn the stitches into how we're going. Turn the stitches. How awesome is that? Now this one here, and so just take your time, and it's one side. Oh, I don't like that one. That's a straight one. I right clicked, and I didn't really want to. I don't think I like that one, so I have to go back to another one because I right-clicked on this one. So let's, uh, and then there, 
and then this seems straight now watch the angle now you can see if I pull the angle out to here I mean I could make it out to here it doesn't really fit but if I pull the angle out to here the turning stitches aren't that smooth so I'm gonna put it here and then there and then here so see what I mean splitting of it to kind of change the angle a little bit there we go and we're nicely off there wow <laughs> that's okay nicely off you just hit your backspace just quickly and fix it up it just takes a little bit of guesswork with the placement but look once you get going on it you get going now I'm not worrying too much about the curve except for wow look what's going on in top I must be going swimming or something because I'm just clicking happily way into the blue it's not too bad you do have to leave a gap but maybe not as much as I was doing now we're approaching the corner so I want to start putting get getting a little closer and putting right clicks on stuff and we want to we want to into here and right click and now is when you want to make the angles a little bit stronger because we want it to turn as we're doing it turn and turn do you see how I turned that and it should be up here and I'm making it oops now oh did you see let me do that again you see what happened I went to do the next one and I, I place that up instead of down because it's kind of confusing when you go around a curve. But if you see it crossing over, then you know, whoops, I placed that wrong. And all you have to do is backspace just once to get that stitch. And if you look, now that I'm paying attention, I am in the right spot. And then we go again and we go again. That one is wrong. So let's go back. We want it to cover up. I right clicked instead of left click. You don't need as much as a gap, but I'm just trying to show it big enough for the stitches. Now look at here, how this is going, this is going, then all of a sudden this is going way over here. That is not gonna look the greatest. So we need to do our angles just a little bit better. We'll get it, a little bit of trial and error here. Now that is much better. I'm making it thicker than I want, but I just wanna be able to show you guys way thicker. I seem to be just going into the sand. Maybe my feet want to be in the sand or something. That is, I put a little wobble on it, but you see how there's smoother angles going around? And let's press enter and let's change the color. I should have done that in the first place, but I never seem to. Click off. Now let's step back a little bit. I would like that thinner so it blends in, but we can go back and work on it. See how pretty that looks, except for it's an abrupt stop, and I don't like that. We're going to work on that just a little bit. So let's let's fix it up. Let's click on it. I missed twice, so let's go to our white, which is right here. Now I've got it. Let's go to our reshape tool. Now when you go into the reshape tool, this might look like a little confusing because there's lines for everything. What the heck? One is your placement point, and one is your angle. So let's move this guy over a little bit so we get a little bit of a slant out. And let's move this guy up a little bit. We don't wanna go too small. And we want these ones back. So yeah, you can hack it out as, as we kind of joke around. I'm just gonna hack out this and then you go back and spend the time um, moving your nodes. So the yellow ones are your nodes, the orange ones are your stitch angles and you can adjust everything that you want i'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it but look how much better that is already it's fantastic it's a little closer to what i want make sure your turning angles aren't too harsh we could have put a couple more in there this one might be better a little smoother but that's not too bad and if you look the stitches were fine we can still do it see what i mean about it being a little harsh there it's kind of hmm Let's look at it in, um, I like what I did, so let's do that. Let's look at it in, um, we're going to leave it a flat stitch. Yeah, you know what, maybe. You could change it to satin if you wanted. I kind of like it. I, I did satin on the other one, so this will be just a little bit different. And I'm just zooming in, and here's what we're going to do next. So I'm going to select the white, and we're going to do the digitized blocks again. And again, take your time with these, and no where your mistakes are and, and know that you can just do what you want and go back and, and touch it up and fix it up and just watch your angle lines. Make sure they're smooth 
and you'll be fine digitizing blocks great for column stitches and satin stitches and I kind of want it like that I think that might do let's see let's see how it looks that went blue I want it white thank you let's step back a little bit and see how that might be a little too thick but you know what not bad not bad it's that uh, whoops fill stitch whoops I don't know why I did that satin does it look better in satin let's go back to our true view a little bit I, I don't know I guess you guys can decide I'm gonna do one in satin and one in fill stitch and nice turning I kind of like it let's try it in satin See, to me, that might be too thick, although it looks like a nice crest. I don't know. Whatever you guys decide on. Let's check out effects. Can we put on any effects? Um, well, that's not bad. Remove it. Side two. This is the feathering. That's what I want. Can you guys see the difference there? Let's remove effect. Now, I wasn't sure if I was going to like it. And I tried one. Didn't like it. Tried this. I like it. Let's try both sides. Well, that's even not that bad either. Let's stick with just side two. So side one, side two, depends how you start off. And I'm thinking that kind of looks like the water is crusting onto the sand. Love it. Love it. Now for the sand, you could add like an embossed fill on it. Okay, obviously that one's not going to work. Um, you could go through and you can make it smaller. You can change it. I liked it just plain. Maybe something like that. Kind of looks like sand. Play around with it and see if there's anything you like. And remember to make the adjustments. Again, I just liked it in the tatami. That's just me, maybe. I don't know. Now, let's unhide everything and let's see how we're looking just for a minute. So, I right-clicked, unhide all. How are we looking? That is looking fantastic. I love it so far. I love it. That looks really good. Now I do want to hide this guy again because we want to be able to see our palm tree. And hopefully we're going to be able to do some uh, cool things on the palm tree. Uh, I might like the, I might like the um, sun a little fancier, but let's get the basics done. I'm also going to hide this guy so we can see what we're doing. Hide select. Now we can see everything. It's still there. Um, you can take it off true view and you could see better. But like I said, it's um, easier to show you guys. So let's look at our palm tree. There's a couple ways you could do the palm tree. You could do leaves. You could do it all in one piece. You could do it with these a uh, little bit of the satin stitches. You could do, you know, a tatami base with these with a little bit of satin stitches. I did it with flat stitches and a little bit of carving. You have to watch how small things are before you get fancy. I didn't do any of these holes because I didn't think they would show at this size. Uh, I think we only picked five inches, right? So it's not, it's not exactly huge. So not all the details you see are going to show up. So now I'm plotting out here and I'm just right clicking here, left clicking, right clicking in the middle, left clicking so we get our nice curves. Now that one didn't stick exactly to it because I'm not placing them perfectly. Again, I'm just kind of hustling along here. Um, and the picture's a little bit pixelated. That's nice and straight. Um, so we don't have to be precise. You guys make it better. Take your time. I just don't want to waste too much. Whoops. See what I did there? When that happens, all I did was I placed a curve instead of a straight point. So this one needs to be straight. This one needs to be curved. That's how you do it. And I did it wrong again. Hey, look at me. I'm on a roll. Maybe I need a nap. I don't know. So I want this one straight and this one straight. Now we did it. Now we're cooking with fire. So if you make mistakes like that, don't feel bad and don't get frustrated. You just have to go back one or two points. That's it. And fix it just like I did. And it's easy. And you will get the hang of it. I promise. It seems kind of daunting with the right clicks and everything moves. But once you get the hang of it, and at least once if you can... Um, 
you know, fix your mistakes as quickly as I did, you will have it mastered um, before you even know it. It's just a little bit different in Hatch. However, it works exceptionally well. Um, and even though I make the occasional mistake, I'm okay with it. I'm used to Bezier curves and I prefer Bezier curves, but heck, I'm up to learning something new. I'm not that bothered about it. Just have to, uh, whoops, see, I did it again. You, and I go back another one. You, you just have to learn how to do it and just work with what you've got. And Hatch is so spectacular. I find everything enjoyable, even, even placing curves differently. We can do it. So hopefully you guys are enjoying this and hopefully you're going to walk away and digitize your own beach scene and go on a little embroidery mental vacation and uh, enjoy the digitizing as much as I enjoy it. Excellent. You guys can also come up with um, ideas for next week's class. I'm trying to keep it on the wow level. So I haven't thought about it yet because I've been thinking about this class. So we'll come up with something really good for next week. So I'm almost done my tree. He is quite busy. He's quite a lovely tree. I'd love to be sitting under him, but it's just right click left click just as I was talking I often have the TV going or Netflix or something while I'm digitizing that is my highest level of enjoyment in life is uh, digitizing while watching TV I just I've been doing it for so long I love it that's just me though and we're almost done and once I get to this point I do want a curve in there so I'm going to right click a curve now I can press enter and there we go with a blue palm tree. We, we're going to be fixing that just fine. We want him a nice color green. How about something like that? Yeah, I think that looks good. That's awesome. So we have all of our elements in place. Again, we were ignoring these guys. So let's unhide everything. Uh, unhide all. And this is how we're looking. And if you look at it here, you can tell that these colors are behind because you can see them. But that's okay. We're going to fix that pretty close to right now. Oh, look how pretty that looks. I love the color blending. I love that I added feathering in here. You can either do it on the sand or on the water. I'm really happy with the tatami stitches with the feathering. Um, we could even do it with this one. Do you want to see? Should we try? It may be too small, but you know what? We could do it on both sides. Maybe. It's a bit small to show. That one's kind of cool. I think I like that one. All right, so it does work. You know, it's not a grand effect because it's so small, but that's okay. So we're going to go, we want to remove, if you remember, this part of the tree, or sorry, the background is going underneath the tree and you can see that it is when we zoom in here you can see the nice red and the yellow so what we want to do is highlight the tree and we want to go to edit objects and this is awesome and it works really well and we want to go right here to remove overlaps now if you click on the bottom part and you look it's not available so all you have to do if it's grayed out and you you know you want to cut out some things you click the other one and it's appeared because it's overlapped. So it's the top one that's overlapping the bottom. So then you click on that and just give Hatch a minute to think about it. And you can see right here, over to the right, you can see here you were successful. And it gives it, you set up the overlap distance um, at the top there in the uh, software settings. And I think it's in, in embroidery settings and you can tell it how much you want it to overlap. And I think that's absolutely awesome. And you can see that it worked by here and we'll, we'll do a quick little stitch out after. So we've got all of our pieces in. Now the only thing that looked, oh wait, no, there is something else. Hold on, there is something else. I forgot, I forgot. So we can go down here to our sun and I'm going to, again, hide it just to make it easier for you guys to see. Hide selected. We've got some little birdies to do. So you could do this picture small enough. You could do these birdies and just maybe a stem stitch. Let's go back over here to digitize. 
and we're going to do a freehand, no, we're going to digitize open shape and we'll make it a little bit bigger. Right click, left click, right click, left click, and enter. And we're going to see how this looks. And go back to our select and we want to do, I uh, no, stem, stem stitch doesn't work. Let's go back to single run, triple run maybe. Change it. It's not quite as thick as I wanted. Backstitch maybe. Backstitch. Well, that's one. Let's let's experiment and see what looks better. I did um let's zoom in. We can do it. Digitize a closed shape. Now it's getting kind of hard to see, but that's okay. We can left click, right click, left click, right click, left click maybe here yeah I kind of like that and then we're gonna right click here and try to match it up and then left click right click left click and yeah, that looks kind of wonky but that's not too bad I mean it's not rocket science right it's a little bird outline let's fill it let's go fill it with black let's step back a little bit yeah, it's pretty hard to tell like this. Let's put our sunshine back because we all need sunshine and we're going to unhide all and our little guys there. I don't know. What do you think? Let's turn on the true view. Well, six of one half dozen of the other. I think they actually both turned out well. Maybe even this guy's better. I'm going to right click and drag and multiply them a little bit so the birds are flying away let's even delete that guy because i thought i'd like it but i kind of like this one better it looks more like a a drawing and you can do as many of these guys i'm just right clicking and dragging it just adds a little interest to it nothing spectacular awesome so what do you think of our design so far we added a few things feathering and uh, different colored mountains and we cut out stuff we can actually, if you wanted to, we could cut out the tree. You also have to put everything in order. I have not done that yet, but we can after if we have enough time. We're not quite done yet. We still do have a few more things to do. So remove overlaps and then we'll do it on the brown. This is just part of the optimizing just to make sure you're not wasting any stitches when you don't have to. I do like our little birdies. I do, I do. Um, We could... Now this is almost too small, but I was thinking maybe some carving in this. I'm not really sure if I liked it or not. I guess that's my, I guess that's my hesitation. I'm not a hundred percent sure if I liked it. I wondered if this would work, but it's it's kind of small for that Florentine. You know, that's not too bad, actually. See the difference between the Florentine effect and just strange? Just a little subtle, just kind of angles. I actually kind of think I like that rather than the carving. I don't know. I don't know. That's cool. I kind of I like it. I absolutely like it. So Florentine, no Florentine. Well, you guys can decide, but see, it just pays to, um, it just pays to test out things and try. I kind of like the Florentine, but I do want to show you guys just a quick carving because this kind of looks flat and you know, the palm tree would have the leaves coming out again. You could digitize them separately or one big piece, whatever you prefer. So let's go into, um, digitize and we're going to make a carving stamp and use pattern. That's not what I want. Use object. Still not what I want. Digitize. That is what I want. You click on start digitizing and I'm just going to do one just to show you now the center of where the branches are kind of there. That was a left click, a right click and there and you hit enter and you hit enter again and there it is and it's not there yet. So two enters and then you click stamp and there it is. How cool is that? Now you can stamp it again and do different things. I'm just going to show you once that's pretty easy to do. Go back to my select tool. 
Um, if there were, you can, uh, you know, mess around with the stamp settings. I kind of like it just the way there was. If there was any carving stamps that were applicable, I'd say use them, but I couldn't find anything. Although, you know, a happy face anywhere is just awesome, but just saying. But that's how you, you could digitize one or two more. I, I don't know if you need to. It's getting a bit small. It kind of did add interest and depth to it, but I think you need another one there and maybe another one there. Let's see if we have enough time to do it. But so far, so good. Now, the only thing is, to me, the edges aren't finished. So I want to finish them. And I picked the wrong one. Digitize closed shape. And I'm going to point here. I thought this added quite a bit more to it. There, 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 and hit enter. And I forgot to change it to outline. But that, oh, you got to go to select and then change it to outline. That's fine. So we do want a motif. And ah, I even like the blue. Wow, I had the other one I had red. Well, I, I like both of them. I like both of them. Now you can play around. I just left it on the first one because I thought, wow, that's awesome. Um, let's see what else we could do. Maybe this one. Well, you know, that's not bad either. That's that's kind of cool. That one's cool. Quite a few of them, that's not enough. Quite a few of them will work because we're working around the edge. Well, that's just boring. I'd like it a bit thicker. Try that. I'm just scrolling with my mouse wheel. And just try. That one's a bit light. And you know, that one's not bad either. How about this one? See, you could do something like that. It almost looks like a postage stamp. You'd have to make adjustments with some of these, of course, to make it look better. But we're just doing the basics here. Some of them I actually really like. How about... See, that one's really cute, too. Yeah, I kind of like that one. That one might be my favorite. I have to uh, do some adjustments. But play around. It seems to change the whole entire look of what you're doing. No, I don't like that one. That one's okay. My favorite is actually probably just the first one. I love that. I also love how this changes every time you do it. I just like the circle motif. I just thought it had a nice edging to it. Let's pick the same red that's in it. And that's awesome. And on the total size of that is um, five by five, five and 5.35 by 4.91, which is exactly the size that I wanted. You can adjust stuff, but it's best to do it at the beginning. And we can, um, you know, change the order around. I think it's pretty good how we did it. All the whites are together. We want to minimize the jump stitches. Um, I let Hatch, when I'm doing these videos, I let Hatch do most of it. But let's step back a little bit, take a look at our design. Yeah, I think you need new carvings or, um, you, I think, could you do an embossed in here? I'm just not happy with my tree. That's why I'm fiddling around. It's also very much part of, you know, coming up with the exact style and way that you want something. Well, that might be okay. That's kind of groovy. You don't want to add too much fanciness, but you, you know, want something maybe. You know, I kind of like that one too. That may be the look that I'm looking for. No, nope. no, nope. I don't think there's squares on a palm tree. Squiggle is too much, but this is how I do it. Oh, see, I like that one. Squiggle parts. It looks kind of random. It looks kind of leafy. So there's a couple of ways of doing the palm tree. It's easy enough. I think it still looks a bit plain in the middle. You can put carvings, you can digitize them. So there's a lovely overlap. There's a couple ways of doing it. Again, with the sun, I digitized it a different way because in the actual picture, there is a, a definition between the rays of the sun and the sun. But I kind of like this way. I'm really happy with that. Let's uh, take a look and make sure everything stitches out fine. And we've got a lot of color changes, so we I would think we'd have to fix that up. But let's look at this color blending go. Ooh, or, see yellow is dark on the bottom, thicker, more dense on the bottom. And then we're gonna go to the red next. 
and the palm tree is nicely cut out and we did the sunshine and there we go with the red filling in Ooh, isn't that nice nice deep red you could do it opposite if you wanted to you can change the angles you could even change the stitch type on this color blend and play around and maybe change the angle change the type and it would come out a little differently I I kind of like this there we go on our Sun nice bit of underlay nice very good I'm gonna speed this up a little bit a lot of color changes though I think you should optimize it a little bit um, to make it go a bit smoother our dark green and brown mountains and there we go and it didn't cut it out quite the way I liked but that's okay that'll work there we go there we go awesome water and then our awesome stitches with a little bit of feathering and now our palm tree that I'm still not happy with but I'm gonna leave it at that and see what you guys can come up with um, I'm gonna play around with it and I think I might add some more carving I'm not really sure um, I like the first one I did but now that when I'm doing the whole thing all over again I think I would like it a better a bit better I like this embossed stitch though I think that adds a little bit more to it and the birdies and the outside so there you go everyone I will um, of course post the um, picture in the group so you guys can do your homework and I've given you quite a few options to come up with your own little twists to it this is basics this is the color blending which looks absolutely gorgeous and look even more gorgeous when you are stitching it out let's unlock this let's unlock all and let's I'm just gonna delete it you don't have to yeah look at that so thanks everyone for watching this is how you do all these special things inside hatch embroidery software and if you love hatch as much as I do you guys will be working on these color blends and coming up with your own things so thanks everyone for watching I look forward to seeing your homework on this one I've given you guys a lot of artistic leeway on this and different ways of doing it get the basics down like I did then play with it and come up with your own style awesome thank you guys for attending class